Now in this video, you guys are gonna learn something that is crazy and that, that technique is going to give you success. Check this out, I'm right over here and this is Jesse and Adam. What's up guys? What's up? They're making five axis curriculum, crazy education that we're putting out for you guys, but that's not what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is I went into Discord. So we have YouTube members that actually become members and then they talk to us. So you guys can actually become members and then we can talk in Discord and you can ask questions. So today I got up at five o'clock, I went to the gym, I looked at Discord and there was a post and they were saying, we're gonna actually drill eight times diameter in stainless steel, do you have any advice? And I thought, you know what? I actually did this video going 40 times D and the technique is so sound, I've never broken a drill. The holes are always perfect. It's similar to other styles, but I gave my own twist to it. And to do that, I actually hand wrote the code, but I've never put it all in one video. So I thought, you know what? When I did the video, we only had 200,000 subscribers and now we have 700,000. So a bunch of you guys have never seen the video. So we're gonna put the video up. And at the end of this video, I literally go step by step and I show you how to hand code this technique absolutely perfect and this is a technique that you can use making crazy manifolds making SpaceX parts Blue Origin parts whatever type of parts you guys are making where you have deep holes going down this technique will give you success and make sure you stay to the end because we're gonna give you those nuggets of gold man technique boom let's go this right here is the baddest drill on the planet those of you that have a lot of experience in aerospace and complex industries, you guys know deep hole drilling in stainless is an art. Oh man, this is gonna be good. So before we get started, I just wanna quickly say, if you love the education, please subscribe to our channel. If you got ideas for future videos, put it in the comments. And if you like this video, go ahead and just click it. All right, so let's get back to deep hole drilling, all right? So the platform is the SGL drill. You guys already know the SGL drill is a crazy drill for stainless. You guys see me talking about the GO drill all the time. And I'm actually drilling Inconel and Titanium and Monel and Hastelloy with the GO drill because the GO drill is a standard tool. You can drill anything and it's cost effective. So now when you look at the SGL, you're looking at a drill that probably costs twice as much as the GO drill. So a lot of automotive companies, when they drill a million holes, the SGL is the go-to drill. Now, why would that be when it's at a higher price point? Because you can drill not only twice as fast as stainless, but you can drill a million more holes than the GO drill. So with the increased productivity, the drill pays for itself quickly and allows the machine to run forever at high productivity now, when we look at the SGL, we have different sizes. We're gonna have a nice stubby drill. That's gonna be our pilot drill. So we're gonna step into the material and actually drill down to 1.2. And that drilled hole will become the pilot for this guy. This size is a 40 times diameter drill. We're gonna slow this guy down so it's not wobbling. We're gonna insert it into the pre-drilled hole. And right before we hit the bottom, we're gonna turn it to full speed, coolant on, and we're just gonna drive this baby, no pecs, all the way down. Oh, I love my job. Let's do it. All right, so just a few things before we start this deep drilling cycle. So I pre-drilled this 316 stainless with an SGL stubby drill. We went Z negative 1.2. Now we're bringing the beast 40 times D. It's about to go down. So when we bring the drill down to the pre-drilled hole, we're gonna be at about 10% of the surface foot and inches per rev because we don't want it moving. I'm not even turning on my through coolant yet because I don't want any pressure. I just wanna have a perfect drill in line with the hole that I can come down in. All I care about is some lubricity right at that hole. So 
So once the drill actually enters, we're gonna actually drop down to one times diameter, which is approximately 5 16 of an inch. The top coolant goes off and the through coolant starts at 1,000 PSI. Synergy 735, boom. Then we're gonna speed it up to 20% and we're gonna feed at 20%, just shy of the 1.2. It's incredibly important because I want to make sure that when the drill hits, I'm approaching slow because what if a chip fell in? When you're drilling hard materials, a chip alone in the wrong place can ruin everything. As I come down slow and I'm actually going clockwise, which is the same direction that it's going to be drilling in, if I do engage a chip, I can actually remove it before I hit the surface. When I'm about 30 thousandths off that surface, I'm actually going to go full speed. So we're at 150 SFM and inches per rev is at 0 0.003. And once that happens, we're going. There's no pecs, there's no turning back, just dropping in Z all the way to the bottom. Now let me talk a little bit about the pilot drill compared to the deep hole drill. One thing that I want to make very clear is that the pilot drill, the diameter has to actually be larger than the deep hole drill. Now that might bring some confusion because both drills are exactly the same size, but they're not. Okay, so check this out. You got to look at the tolerance. Okay, so when Canameto actually chose these drills as a pilot and a deep hole, they looked at the tolerance and the pilot has a greater tolerance on the high end, meaning the diameter is bigger, and the deep hole drill actually has a tolerance that's on the lower end, which makes it slightly smaller, right? We're just dealing with a few tenths because once that deep hole drill starts and it's traveling through the hole created by the pilot drill, you do not want it cutting material. You just want the pre-diameter hugging the deep hole drill just to position it perfectly so as it drills the material and it goes deep, it's perfectly straight. Here's another point that I want to make. It's important that the tip angle of your pilot drill is greater than the deep hole drill. The reason is we want the center of the drill to hit first, all right? and that'll allow you to go straight and have a perfectly drilled hole. If the outside corners hit first, you can chip the corners, which will greatly reduce the life of your drill. When I break through the bottom, I'll slow down to 100 RPMs, and we'll just pull it back at 50 inches a minute, just being gentle, and then we'll take the entire process, and we'll just do two more holes with the exact same drill. All right, so check this out. The SGL drill looks absolutely beautiful. The tip, all the cutting edges, the flutes, they look flawless. They look amazing. And that's after drilling through 316 stainless steel over 12 inches deep right through the bottom. I grabbed some of the chips 
as the drill was dropping down, you could barely even hear any of the chips coming out. And look at how tiny they are. Like it just breaks those chips so perfectly. It's amazing. And there you go, the SGL drill, 40 times diameter, no pecking and stainless steel and high temps. It's the greatest drill I've ever used and I've used all of them. It's amazing, boom. So what I did was actually hand code the drilling cycle. Why would I do that if you could actually do it in CAM? Because I wanted absolute control. Deep hole drilling in stainless and super alloys is an art, all right? And you have to treat it as such. So I figured I would just give you the code that I used to successfully drill stainless 40 times diameter. And if you have additional questions or comments, go ahead and put it down below. And just like I'm doing now, it might be in a future vlog, okay? Now, we're gonna start at Z.1, X, Y is zero, and it's centered perfectly over the pre-drilled hole, okay? In the other video, we had a pilot drill that went down Z, negative 1.2. Although the pilot drill was the same diameter, the tolerance was on the plus side and the tolerance on this deep hole drill is on the minus side because we don't want any rubbing, all right? So this is where we're starting. We're Z.1 and we're ready to drop into the hole. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the spindle. So it's gonna be M3S183, which turns on the spindle clockwise at 183 RPMs, which is 10% of my speed I'm gonna use for actually drilling the stainless. Why is it so low? Because I don't want any wobble when I actually drop into the pre-drilled hole. In the other video, I explained why a lot of people actually reverse the spindle when they drop in. Also talked about the drill tip and the diameters, etc. All right, now while I'm outside of the hole, I'm gonna turn on my flood coolant, so M8. It doesn't matter, I could have it off, I could have it on, but in case I touch metal, I want the lubricity, okay? So our first Z movement is gonna go one times diameter. All right, so we're gonna go Z negative, three, one, two, five, and the feed is gonna be at 0.55, which is also 10% of my overall feed that I'm gonna use later, all right? So I'm just at 10%. So I'm dropping down to Z negative 312. I'm dropping down into the hole. Once I'm engaged inside the hole and my tip is not in danger of hitting the corner of the pre-drilled hole, at this time, I'm gonna turn off the flood coolant and I'm gonna turn on the through coolant that's gonna come through the tip of the drill. Now that my drill is secure in the hole, I'm gonna turn up the speed, all right? So I'm gonna to go to 20%, which is 366. And because in machining, sometimes it takes a second for the spindle to react or the coolant to react, I'm just gonna add a dwell, okay? So I'm gonna add a G4 F1, which will give me a dwell for one second just to ensure that coolant is coming through. Now I'm gonna drill all the way down to Z negative 1.17. And that'll put me within 30 thousandths of hitting the bottom of the hole, all right? Why am I so close? I'm so close because I don't want any chips getting trapped right there. Okay, because at this time I'm actually going to full RPM. So speed, 1833, I'm just gonna add a dwell. And now the feed rate goes up to 5.5. And guess what, there is no stopping now. We're just gonna plunge all the way down, feeding at 5.5, 40 times diameter, breaking little chips all the way down in stainless steel. Once we break through, you'll see the coolant start blasting through the bottom of the hole, okay? At that time, I'm just gonna slow the drill down to 100 RPMs. I'm gonna turn my coolant off, and then I'm just gonna bring my drill out of the hole, 50 inches a minute, nice and cool. Boom, we're ready for the next hole. And that is exactly how I hand programmed this SGL drill.